God is all powerful. God can do anything but sin. God cannot lie. So one may ask as a Christian, if God has all this power, and I'm supposed to do right, and I'm supposed to live right, and yet I sin, isn't God able to stop me before I sin? And that's a good question. There is a Bible answer. And the question is, you know, we want God to do everything. If a man has a need for a car, he can sit on his couch all day and all year and all decade and a century and pray, 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 pray. If he don't go out to a car dealership, if he doesn't open up a newspaper and look at the automobiles for sale, God is not going to drive that car and park it in his driveway and give him the keys to the car. And when it comes to sin, we have a battle. God has given us Christian armor, and many Christians think, you know, it's a battle of the devil and all that, which is true. But we also have another enemy of ourselves. My enemy is Stiley Hayward. The flesh. I have the flesh and the Holy Spirit of God for I am saved. The Holy Spirit abhors the flesh. And the flesh abhors the Holy Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit in me does everything that pleases God. Glory to God. Amen. The flesh does everything to displease God. That's not good. So in the realm of a Christian life, though all have sinned, can't God stop me from sinning? I don't know what it is for you, but let's say it's the bottle. Can't God Take that bottle out of my hand. Can't God dry up the context of that bottle when I open it? There's nothing to drink. Can't God burn up that cigarette completely before I put it to my lips? Can't God drive that woman, the less, away? Cannot God put a guard on my mouth if I'm going to lie? Or boast or gossip. Whatever particular sin can't my God, my Savior, stop me? And the question is yes, but not to your satisfaction. Now look at you here in Genesis 3. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Genesis 3, where all sin began. The woman saw that the tree was good for food, that was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree to be desired to make one wise. She took the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also on her husband with her, and he did eat. Now, that, that's the problem. Why did God put that tree there? Why didn't God build a stone wall around that tree? Why didn't God put poison ivy around that tree? Why is the tree there? <coughs> I can't answer that question. Why didn't God put a hedge about that tree? I can't answer that question. Now there's, there's a teaching, a doctrine out there that we're going to rebuke. It's called Calvinism. Calvinism in the nutshell is God has pre prescribed in my life <clears throat> excuse me, 
I'm saved and going to heaven no matter what, I can't go to hell. Or, God has prescribed, I am going to hell and no matter what I do, I can't go to heaven. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. That's a false teaching. Because God could predetermine pre Adam and Eve to take that fruit no matter what, but that's not the case. God could have predetermined that Adam and Eve not take that fruit of that tree and build the fence, build, but he didn't. <clears throat> ah, excuse me. But what did God do? Did he do nothing? There it is. No. I'll show you two places. Chapter 2, verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, Adam, saying, Every tree of the garden thou may freely eat. Oranges, apples, I'm going to say raisins, apricots, pears, peaches, they're yours. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now back to three. <clears throat> Excuse me. I deeply apologize. Something's in my throat. Unto the woman, oh, wait a minute, three, six, not six. And when the woman saw the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree the desire to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, he did eat. Could God have stopped him? Yes, he did. Oh, wait a minute, no, Tyler, they, they ate the fruit. I know they did, but God... God in Genesis chapter 2, verse 16, 17, warned Adam not to take that fruit. What's the consequences of taking that fruit? Now, there are times, <clears throat> I know for me personally, my mom, when I was a little boy, I don't know how old, my mom would tell me, don't take, touch the stove, Stiley, it's hot. Sorry, I got a pot on the on the stove. Don't touch it. It's hot. Don't touch the pan that's on the stove. It's hot. And eventually, a few times in my life, what does Stiley do? After the warnings of my mom, I go up, I touch the thing, and I burn myself. Okay. I had when my when I moved to my father in law's house, <clears throat> he told me, he says, "Hey, listen, the shower." You know, use the shower. It's I had it set. It's extremely hot. I went in the shower the first time. I burned myself. You're going down the road. The sign says 45 miles per hour speed limit. You're going down. You're doing 54, and you hear, <laughs> and you end up with a speeding ticket. God could have stopped that cop. God could have could have made that water cooler. God could have cooled that pot down. No, you were warned. I was warned. And a lot of times when we say, couldn't God stop it? Why did God allow? He tried. With his word. You ignore the Bible. You ignore God. You're going to have consequences. Adam and Eve ignored the word, the voice of God about this fruit, and all the troubles and problems came to be. Don't blame God. He warned Adam. Adam disregarded the warning, and we got the curses and the sin and all the plagues upon us today. Yes, God could have prevented your lung cancer. And when you were told it's wrong to smoke, it's sin to smoke, sin, uh, uh, smoking causes cancer, the Surgeon General warning about smoking, and uh, you were warned. You heard messages. You heard your husband. Yeah, I got somebody in mind. And you kept smoking. And you snuck, take the keys and go to the store and get your cigarettes. And then you, when you were diagnosed with 
when you had coughing problems and you couldn't couldn't breathe and you're coughing, you get you're coughing all night, you can't sleep, and you ended up in the hospital, and the doctor says you got lung cancer. You got about six months to live and you die within two months. Don't blame me, don't blame God. Especially when God not only tells you you shouldn't put that kind of stuff in your body, God had the Surgeon General, I don't know if he's saved or not, but he has the Surgeon General and the tobacco companies, or those that make the packages of the tobacco products, he has them put a warning on the thing, don't smoke this or or. Chew this tobacco. It's a hazard to your health. It is in writing. And you still do it. You get lung cancer. You get emphysema like I have. You get COPD like I have from my time of smoking. It's not God's fault. It's not the tobacco company's fault. It's your fault. It's Stiley's fault. And I tell people about my, my health concerns and my health, you know, how poor my health is. It's because of diabetes. It is my fault. Not God's fault, not the sugar fault, not the not the, the sweet fault, not the cupcake fault, not the baker's fault. It's my fault. Okay? Plain and simple. See the thing is already right, just we could stop right here and, and we're gonna go on. But God warned Adam by voice, by word. Adam took the, the word of God and disregarded it. Okay? So let's take another place. Let's take 2 Samuel 11. 2 Samuel 11, verses 2 through 5. <clears throat> and it came to pass at even time that David arose from off his bed. And walked upon the roof of the king's house. For the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent, inquired after the woman. And one said, is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Elon, the wife, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her. She came in unto him, lay with him, excuse me, lay with her. For she was purified from her uncleanness. She returned unto her house. And the woman conceived and sent and told David. And said, I am with child. Could not have God had David a complete sleepful night. And, and went to bed and woke up early in the morning and never saw Bathsheba? Yes, he could have. Could God have told Bathsheba, will you hurry up and get, come on, hurry up, get to Wash yourself and get dressed and get out of there. Oh, no, 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 Bathsheba. You got other things to do. There's no time for washing right now. Could God have done that? Yes, he could have. Could God put shooting stars in the sky and say, hey, David, look over here? Yes, he could have. But did God? No. And David from this is going to commit adultery with a woman that is married to Uriah. And eventually David's going to murder Uriah. You mean, you could, could not David? I mean, if you know the story, David tries to send Uriah to his wife's house or we think he, he had sex with her and there's the baby. Uriah sleeps at the, at the front door of, of David's home and, and couldn't, couldn't God just tell Uriah to go home. Yeah, he could have, but he didn't. You mean David, a man's after own heart? God did it. Yes, he did. No, wait a minute. David commits adultery, and you lead later on. He's going to commit a murder. Yeah. But David did put up the stop sign. Oh, where do you see that, Stiley? I see that in the law that David lived by. And David knew the law. David knew the scripture. It says, thou shalt not commit an adultery. Thou shalt not covet thy, thy neighbor's wife. David knew that. What did David do? I don't care what the law says. I don't care what God says. 
I don't care what Moses wrote. I like her. I want her. He has been warned. The messengers came back to David and said, she is a wife. It's almost like the messengers like, uh, David, that's not yours. That's not yours. David was warned by the scriptures, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, thou shalt not murder. And David, I believe, I believe the Lord sent David's servant to say, she's a wife. So yes, if David's servant, by God, saying, you better tell that man she's a wife. But what did David do with, with the word of God? What did David do with the law? What did Adam do with the word of God? Huh, I'm going to do my own thing. How many of you out there have committed adultery with another man's wife or another woman's husband? You know. And... You completely disregard the scriptures. How many have been out there? You, you know, you vowed to, 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 to love and obey, to death do your part, that man or that woman, and then you end up in the divorce. You know the Bible says about oath. You go out there and, and you know you, you get yourself a Christian tattoo. You know what God says about making marks in your skin. You know the scriptures. You just, oh, I don't read the Old Testament. You know, there was a cause in the law that you were guilty, even if you didn't know you were guilty. And if you get under a preacher with a King James Bible and you hear preaching, and one day the Holy Spirit walks through that mouth of that preacher that or that teacher, and he speaks to your heart saying, that's your sin. That's happened to me. You better repent. You better listen to the preaching. You better listen to teaching the Bible because because it may be a warning of sin that you might be going to face. As God did with Adam. You're going to face that fruit. David, you're going to face that woman. David, you're going to face that man. I'll eat the fruit. I'll take the wife. I'll kill the husband. And God... Stop them with the word of God. With his his words. And. Okay. America is going to go down in a fall of fire. Because the scriptures say sodomites are not to live. Sodomites is an abomination. But they keep legalizing. They keep approving. And the churches say all are welcome. And they get the rainbow flags everywhere. And those that do preach the gospel. Those that do preach from the Bible. Those that do stand for Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit are put forth as wicked. And those that do the abominations of, of what God says not to do. And the abominations. And the things that rebel against the word of God, they put as good. You're going to pay? Adam and Eve suffered, and we suffer because of Adam and Eve. David is going to suffer, and so will four of his sons will suffer. See, the fact is, can't God stop us when he stops us with the word of God, 66 books? Somewhere in 66 books is that sin. Those sins that God warns you about. Don't say God never tried to stop me. Oh, God couldn't stop. Don't you say that. Because somewhere in the scriptures, you have either read it every year 
I read my Bible all year. Or you avoid it by, oh, I don't read my Psalms. I only read the New Testament. Well, I don't read the Bible at all. You missed it. Or made a fact is you go to the Bible. I read the Bible every day throughout the year. And you skim read it to say, okay, there's my three chapters. I'm done for the day. Next. Next. Okay, Acts. <laughs> what people consider one of the greatest Christians. The Apostle Paul. Acts 21.4. And finding the disciples, we tarried seven days, who said to Paul through the Spirit, that's capital S, that's the Holy Spirit, that he should not go to Jerusalem. The Holy Spirit says to, to the disciples, tell Paul, like those servants of David, she's a, she's a wife, tell Paul, don't go to Jerusalem. Okay? Verse 11. And when it was come... When he was come unto us, as Abacus, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said, This saith the Holy Ghost, there's the Spirit, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owns his girdle and shall deliver him unto the hands of the Gentiles. And when we heard these things, both we and they of the place besought him not to go to Jerusalem. Number two. Number two. Verse 17. And when we were come to Jerusalem, let's just wait a minute. Number two, verse 12, sorry. And when we heard these things, we, both we and they at the place besought him not to go to Jerusalem. Verse 17. And when we were come to Jerusalem, we come to Jerusalem, Paul goes in the temple, he, he, and there's an uproar, he's taken prisoner. And he's put before kings and queens. He's put before the judgment seat. And I, I forget how many years he loses. Because he went to a place that God told him twice. Don't go. Maybe God's told you in the scriptures. Don't eat. Don't put that to your mouth. Don't drink. You can find scripture that says not to drink alcohol. You can find scriptures that's about tobacco. You can find sexual sins in the Bible. You can find sins of your mouth. You can find sins of your heart. It's in the Bible. You can find the sodomy sins. You can find the sins of pride. You can find the sins of disobeying the government and your leaders. You can find the sins of ill-treating your parents. You can find the sins of ill-treating your children. You can find the sins of your attitude towards your wife. You can find the sins of your attitude towards your husband. You can find the sins of your attitude to your boss. And you can find the sins of your attitude to your employees. They're in there. 66 books. You can find the sins of your brothers to you and your sisters to you. You can find the sins of favorite child. Paul was told, don't go to Jerusalem. He went to Jerusalem. And you know the rest of the story. I hope you do. Paul was supposed to be in Rome. God finally got him to Rome, but it took many, many years. And it's a period we call the silent years of Paul because he disobeyed God. The Apostle Paul, man, we think he's the greatest Christian of all. Adam and Eve disobeyed the word of God. David disobeyed the word of God. Paul disobeyed the word of God. Don't, I mean, don't you think that God could have killed the camels, the horses, the asses that would carry into Jerusalem? Don't you think that God could have caused a great construction like they do on the highways in America and closed off the roads and blew up the bridges and 
sent Paul, Paul on a course a different way than going to Jerusalem? Yes, he could have. You think God could have had Jerusalem under COVID-19 and, 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 and there's restrictions and there's quarantine. You can't come to Jerusalem because, you know, you got to wear a mask and all that. You, and Paul's like, okay, can't go to Jerusalem. I'll go to Rome. You think God could have done that? He did. He caused COVID-19 in the worldwide a couple of years ago, but he didn't do it in Jerusalem. There, there was a time that they were going to go through Asia, and the Holy Spirit says, no, don't go. And instead, a man from Macedonia says, come on over here, please. And I'm not quoting the scripture correctly. And they went to Macedonia, and they did not go where the Holy Spirit went. So th there's listening to God. I advise you to listen to God. If the scriptures say don't commit adultery, don't commit adultery. If the scriptures say don't have any idols or images, don't have idols or images. If the, Holy, if the scriptures say don't take the Lord's name in vain, don't take the Lord's name in vain. But if you disregard the scripture, don't blame God. Well, God didn't do anything. Yes, he did. All right, Proverbs. Now, talking about Proverbs chapter 1. So, Proverbs chapter 1 will answer to the violence in America today. We've got people shooting up people like crazy. And people say guns don't kill. Well, I mean, where are these bullets coming from? And these people are going to stand before God who hold the rifles, hold the guns, and use them on other people. They're going to stand account to God even though they've never themselves read Proverbs chapter 1. This is just an example. What do you say to the to the people who have killed other people in America with guns? These, these mass shootings and thou shalt not commit a murder. Thou shalt do no murder. Plain and simple. But you took that off the walls of the courthouse. You took the Ten Commandments off the courthouse so they don't know what the, what's going on. But it's in the pages of the 66 books of the Bible. The law says thou shalt not kill. Jesus said thou shalt not kill. Paul says thou shalt not kill. Okay? It's a given fact in the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, thou shalt not kill. And yet every time there's a shooting, And every time in New York that somebody gets pushed off a subway and they die, there is not one case the media says, thou shalt not kill. That's, this is not, this is not read. My son, if son is sinners enticed, he consent them not. If, if somebody says, come on, let's go sing. Solomon says, don't do it. Well, you know, peer pressure. Solomon said, no. Come on, man. You want to do some red pills? You want to do some green pills? Here, put this thing in your mouth and, and smell it. Here, put this stuff up to your nose. No. Well, God didn't stop it. God didn't prevent me from having them in my path. God didn't give me the money. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I mean, God could have prevented that. Drug pusher. But the Bible says his sinners enticed, he could send them not. God, oh, well, that woman at work, you know, eh, could send thou not. I got involved in this sin. I got, you know, I'm all. If sinners enticed, he could send thou not. 
Eve should have done that. Greatest sinner would have been the, the serpent, the devil. Now, I'm not sure if Bathsheba was sinning. Some say she, I mean, she was washing herself. Some take, you know, she was naked. She may not have been naked. She just may have been beautiful. You ever see a beautiful woman clothed? I don't think the disciples that warned Paul were sinners, but if sinners come to you and the world calls it peer pressure, the Bible says, my son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us look purposely for innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave. And a hole, and they go down there. Let, let, let's shoot them up. Let's kill them. Hey, that guy killed this many. I wonder if I can breed, beat his record. I wonder if I can do this real live video game. He did 57. I'm going to go for the record and go over, over 57. I'm going to try 100. He carried four guns. I'm going to try to carry eight. Ever wonder some of these people, maybe they think that life is a video game and they're trying to overpower the person that just did the crime? Maybe it's so alluring that my son is sinners enticed and, and consent thou not. My son walk not, verse 15, now in the way of them, refrain thy foot from their path, for they for with their feet they run to evil and make haste to shed blood. That would be a great verse. For what's going on in the violence of America today. For the youth. And then you got to saying this transgender thing and all that. And you know, what's the problem with that? I got the simple problem. God made a male and female. That's, that's what God said. That's what Jesus said. That's what Paul said. As far as marriage, one man, one woman. That's what the that's what the law says. That's what Jesus said. That's what Paul says. Well, you know, the science and education and all that. If sinners enticed thee, consent thou not. Plain and simple. Oh, what about hell? God sends people to hell. No, he don't. God does not send anybody to hell. Well, see, there's no hell. Yes, there is. Men go to hell because they want to go. You see, like Adam and Eve, like David, like Paul, like those who, who, who do crimes and those who give in to peer pressure, those go to hell, they go to hell in rebellion of what God said. For the Bible says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. The Bible says, uh, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The Bible says, with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto on salvation. Bible says the wage of the sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Bible says the Lamb of God was take away the sin of the world. There are plenty of places in the Bible where it says how not to go to hell. And when you don't do what God told you to do to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you wake up in hell one day, you disobeyed, you rebelled against the word of God as Adam and Eve, as David, as Paul, as those that commit these crimes and other sins. But you want God to, 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 in your life, you want God to give you that special rose bush path with the hedges, the manicured edges, no hills, no valleys, straight path, With ice cream cones and milkshakes and lollipops all the way. And balloon for the kitties and face painting. That's not going to happen. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, there are times that God does prevent things in your life for your benefit. Now, don't let me not say God doesn't do that. 
There are things that God allows in our life for our benefit, and there are things that God takes out of our life for benefit. And there are things that happen to us regarding sin that God warned us in 66 books not to do it. Adam and Eve, David, Paul, you did it outside of what God said. Styley, you have done it outside of what God said. Fill in your name in the blank. You have done it outside of what God said. God did try to stop you. He, he wrote to you in black and white and maybe red and white. Now, if you don't see it in the Bible, you need to pray. You need to study the Bible. Because the Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, and work from it, it needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. How do you be ashamed? Is when you do a sin and you find in the Bible that it said not to do it. You find the Bible that says to do it, and you don't do it. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. It doesn't say go in the world and say come to church. It doesn't say that. It says, go out there and tell them about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Don't tell them about your church. Don't tell them about your pastor. Don't tell them about your evangelist. Tell them about Jesus. Okay? The church can't save them. Sunday school class can't save them. But Jesus can't. 